Limited shoulder internal rotation can impact your shoulder health, function, and performance. But the problem is most of the exercises used to improve this motion don't work. And that's because you're not working on a key factor that allows your shoulder to internally rotate. And if you can work on this, it will improve your range of motion, the way your shoulder feels, and performs. Normal shoulder internal rotation is somewhere between 70 to 90 degrees. Your ability to produce this motion is not just related to the shoulder joint and it's not just related to the scapula. The factor that few people talk about is the base of the shoulder girdle, the rib cage. Two areas of the rib cage must expand. The bottom part of the rib cage, the false and floating ribs, which I'll call the posterior lower thorax, and the sternal ribs on the front, which would be the anterior upper part of the thorax. These two areas expand in a diagonal. When this happens, the scapula or shoulder blade can retract and externally rotate. And when this happens, the shoulder can internally rotate, allowing you to produce that motion. But if you can't create expansion in those areas, what ends up happening is the scapula migrates forward. You often see this in rounded shoulders. This creates a position of external rotation at the glenohumeral joint, which limits your ability to internally rotate. So if you can't internally rotate your shoulder, it's because you can't expand the bottom part of the back of the ribs and the top part of the front of the ribs. If you don't have someone to test you, you can simply perform an Apley's scratch test where you reach both of your arms behind you and you try to touch your hands together. If you are way far away, which could be a couple hand lengths, you're probably limited in shoulder internal rotation. If you found that you're limited in this motion, I'm going to show you four exercises that can improve your shoulder internal rotation. We'll do this two ways, by reaching from 90 to 120 degrees of shoulder flexion, as well as driving a medial or inner arm contact. I start most people with this elevated quadruped on elbows move to get that. Place your forearms on a box, make two C's with your hands, and rotate them downward like you're pouring a drink out for your homies. You should weight bear on the pisiform, which is the wiggly bone that's on the pinky side of the wrist, and the elbow. You'll also be weight bearing on your kneecaps, which you'll have a 90 degree angle at your hips. Start sagged, silently breathe in through the nose. On the exhale, you're going to gently push yourself up through those three points. Do not make the mistake of overreaching because you'll end up crunching and this will limit your ability to expand the rib cage. Maintain this pressure and breathe silently in through the nose, soft and slow through the mouth. Do five sets of five breaths two times per day for two to four weeks before you progress to the next move, which is a hook lying 120 reach. This challenges the internal rotation demand even further by moving the arms more overhead. Lie on your back with your knees bent. Feet will be flat on the ground. You want to weight bear through three points. The PSIS, which is the bony part that's at the top of the pelvis, the inside heel, and the base of the big toe. If you can't sense the PSIS, try elevating the feet and that will rock you back into position. Place your arms at about 110 to 120 degrees of shoulder flexion, keeping the arms relaxed at the start. Take a silent breath of air in through the nose. On the exhale, reach the arms at that angle at a three out of 10 effort. Do not reach to the end range, because again, if you do this, you'll end up crunching, which will limit your ability to expand the rib cage. Maintain this reach and hold for five sets of five breaths, two times per day for two to four weeks. The next two moves focus on contacting the ground through inner contact points, 
when you press into the ground with these points, it drives internal rotation through the arm. You can pair these with the other moves. So this first move, which is frog breathing, I would do this after you did elevated quadruped on elbows. Have your knees and your elbows wider than shoulder width. Bring your feet together and your hands together. Lie face down, weight bearing through the inner knee, the inner elbow, and that wiggly bone on the wrist called the pisiform. You can do the C grip hand position with this one as well. Start sagged, make sure you're looking straight down. Silently breathe in through the nose. On the exhale, you're going to press your torso up by pushing through those three points evenly. Do not overpress because you will end up crunching. If you notice that you're sagging through your lower back, you need to press more firmly through the inner knee points. Maintain that three to four out of 10 pressure and breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth for five sets of five breaths, two times per day for two to four weeks. This next one, which I would pair with the hook lying reach is called low oblique sit. Because this is a single arm support, it's more difficult, but it could potentially improve your shoulder IR that much more. Lie on your side, making a C grip with your hand and rotating down. You'll weight bear through three points, the pisiform, the elbow, and the outside knee. Take your top arm and leg and reach them both forward. This will log roll the torso and the pelvis, so that way you have increased weight bearing on the outside knee and the base of the wrist. If you don't feel those points, try using wedges to tip you into position. You'll silently breathe in through the nose. On the exhale, press your torso up through those points with a three to four out of 10 effort. Maintain this pressure and breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth. Do five sets of five breaths, two times per day for two to four weeks on whichever shoulder is limited in internal rotation. If you're still experiencing some discomfort or maybe your shoulder motion is just limited in other directions, then I would check out this video right here because it goes into some other moves you can do to improve your shoulder mobility.